Good morning. Praise the Lord. He is worthy. Is he not? Of all our praise, all our attention, he deserves all the glory. For he is the one that raises one up and throws the other down. That's what his word says. He is the authority, the main authority. But he does set authority in place. He sets one authority over the other, which is directly under him. He did it back then, and he's doing it today. He's the one that chooses the vessels that he puts in authority. Hallelujah. This devotional today is called Treasures in the Darkness by J.R. Miller. And as I was reading this, it just the Lord was just showing me that he, He's doing this today. Now this verse in Isaiah 45, this is talking about God raising people up here. Now this one in particular was Cyrus. He used as his instrument. He raised him up as king. But as the word says, that the word is our example. So this is for us today as well. God places who he wants in authority. And that authority is above all other authorities, but that authority is directly under God. And those that he raises up to be in the place of authority, he will give them understanding and treasures in the darkness. He will give them exactly what they need to fulfill that office that he has placed them in. I just want to read you the first few verses here because this applies even today. And this is what he did then with his servant, with his instrument. He became his servant because God used him as an instrument. Isaiah 45, 1. Thus saith the Lord, his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden, to subdue nations before him, I will loose the loins of kings, to open before him the two-leaved gates, and the gates shall not be shut. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in asunder the bars of iron. In other words, he, he's raising this instrument up, appointed by the Lord to be the king and God qualified him for that office he was raised up by him to be an instrument of doing great things in the world for the Lord this was delivering the Jews from their captivity and restoring them to their own land but even today the Lord has his purpose to set in authority those that he chooses to do the work that he wants done in this end time we are in. And as he says here, whose right hand I have holden, God has. God's raised up. God has supported. God has strengthened and guided and directed 
to do what he did. And now it's to do what he's going to do. To subdue nations before him. You know, God, God's doing it. God is doing it. In this verse, Isaiah 45, 3. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. Do you know he's called us by name even before we were born? Even before we were born. He's called us by name, called us from the womb. Let's look further into that verse. And I will give thee the treasures. This is awesome. I will give thee the storehouse, the depository, the armory of darkness. The dark, the night, the obscurity, the sorrow. I'll give you the treasures of darkness. You know, we go through dark times. We don't understand them. We don't know what's going on. It's painful. It's hurtful. What are you doing, God? Listen, I will give thee the treasures of darkness of that time. And hidden riches... I give you secret storehouses, valuable storehouses, hidden riches of secret places. If something's a secret, not everybody knows about it, do they? But he says right here, I will give thee the treasures of secret places covert places, concealed places, that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee, which call thee out by name. I've called you out, he says, by name, by character, by authority. I've called you out by your character and authority that I've put in you saith the Lord I've called thee by thy name I am the God am the God of Israel let it be known he is the God of Israel he is the God of heaven and earth he is the God that puts in place who he wants to put in place And woe be unto those that try to thwart that. Woe be unto those that try to push that person out of that place. God has ordained them to be. Woe be unto those. And I will give thee treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places. that have been laid up in private places and not seen the light for many years. You know, hidden things God's going to bring to the light in the heart of those that he has chosen to be in authority. To be in position in this day, this end time day, that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, I, the Lord, which call thee by name, I am the God of Israel. I called you before you were born. This is the proof. He is the God, the omnipotent God, omniscient God. And he knew things before they were. 
He called things that were not as though they were. He knew before the beginning of time. Acknowledge him, the Lord. Acknowledge him to be the Lord God of heaven, the Lord God of Israel. He knows all. The beginning from the end. He is the authority in heaven and earth. And he has chosen to put his authority in who he has chosen to set them in place in different places in this end time. This devotional, Treasure in the Darkness, by J.R. Miller. Now I want you to listen to this. This is just so awesome. You know, we look at obscurity and darkness and not being able to see or understand as something bad. But no, it's something good. It's something very good. Because it means God's doing a work. <laughs> He's doing a hidden work. And hey, no one else is going to get the credit for it. No one else knows about it. It's a secret work. And he will reveal it as he chooses to reveal it. In the way he wants to reveal it. His authority is moving through this earth in his people in those he has chosen and put in place his authority is moving it is working it is coming forth his word is not returning void hallelujah this devotional treasure in the darkness and as you listen to this you look at the spiritual aspect of this little symbolic analogy. I pray God give you the understanding, the deep understanding of this, because it is awesome. In the famous lace shops of Brussels, there are special rooms devoted to the spinning of the world's finest lace, all with the most delicate patterns. The rooms are kept completely dark, except for the light that falls directly on the developing pattern from one very small window. Only one person sits in each small room, where the narrow rays of light fall upon the threads he is weaving. For lace is always more beautifully and delicately woven when the weaver himself is in the dark, with only his work in the light. To me, that is just the most awesome thing right there. I want to stop right there for a minute. You think about this. Just see this in your mind's eye. Now this really takes place, okay? Special rooms. And there's only one person in the room. There's only one light coming from one window. I look at that as... Even like in the ark, there was one window that could be open, but it looked up for Noah. That light comes from the Lord. The light of his glory, the light of his understanding, the light of his power shining forth. into that room 
one person, them and God. And there's a weaving going on. There's a work going on. A beautiful making going on. Now, if you look at lace, lace is just beautiful. The patterns of lace, the delicacy of lace. You look at God's creation, even human beings. How delicately and intricately we are made. And flowers and everything. So detailed. So on purpose. The authority of God speaking forth his word. And it happened. It was created. And it happened. Back to this devotional. Sometimes. The darkness in our lives is worse because we cannot even see the web we are weaving or understand what we are doing. Now this web is not in a bad sense. It's weaving something in the dark with just the light shining on that work. Isn't that Awesome. Therefore, we are unable to see any beauty or any possible good arising from our experience. Because we don't understand what we are doing a lot of the times. Just have to obey. We just have to do what God is saying and go forward. And not think about the circumstances, not think about the consequences, just do as he says. Hey, this is his work. It's not our work. It's his work. It's him given the instruction and the authority to weave that work intricately, purposefully. And it's his light that shines on it. It's his light that shines the way. Yet if we are faithful to forge ahead. And if we do not give up. Someday we will know. That the most exquisite work of our lives was done during those days when it was the darkest. In Galatians 6, 9 And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not let us not be weary. Let us not to be weak. Let us not fail in heart, in well-doing, in honest, worthy, valuable, and virtuous doing. For in due season, in proper season, at the set time, we shall reap a harvest, if we faint not. Let us not be wearing well-doing in good works and well-doing which are done according to the will of God from a principle of love to Him. Those works are done because of love for Him. Faith. And in the name and strength of Christ and with a view to the glory of God. Acts of beneficence to Christ's ministers and the poor in particular. 
This is agreeable to the mind of God, and it's well-pleasing in His sight, too. And in doing these things, don't be weary. You should not be weary. Their spiritual strength will be renewed. And grace is in the exercise of doing these things. And not be weary in doing these things. Even though we may meet with things which tend to discourage us. And make us weary. Even in our own circumstances, losses in the world, multitudes of things, the ungratefulness of some, even though in due time we shall reap. Either in this world sooner or later or in the proper time in God's own time by enjoying increase of the fruits of righteousness for the seed sown shall spring up again the bread that is cast on the waters will be found after many days and such as honor the Lord with their substance shall be blessed with plenty of temporal good things either they or theirs or else in the other world or at the end of this which will be the harvest time the reaping time the time of enjoying eternal life if we faint not if we faint not but continue to the end persevere constantly in doing acts of beneficence and then patiently wait as the husbandman does for the precious fruits of the earth for there must be a distance of time between sowing and reaping. Men must not expect to reap as soon as they sow, and therefore should not be weary of sowing, nor impatient in waiting. Though they do not see as yet the appearance of the fruits thereof, for in their season they will be seen and enjoyed. It's just like planting a garden. You plant a garden, it takes time for the seed to come up, doesn't it? But when you see that seed start coming up and that plant start bursting forth through the ground, and you see those green leaves, and then you see it start growing and bearing fruit, and then the harvest takes time. Hallelujah. If you seem to be living in deep darkness because God is working in strange and mysterious ways, do not be afraid. Simply go forward in faith and in love, never doubting Him. He is watching and will bring goodness and beauty from all of your pain and tears. Goodness and beauty. You know, it's just like the little allegory of Heinz feet on high places and much afraid. That's what she started out to be. Her companions on the journey were sorrow and suffering. But at the end, they were grace and glory. If we persevere, if we go on, he'll bring beauty and goodness out of the pain and the tears. 
the shuttles of his purpose moved to carry out his own design. Seek not too soon to disapprove his work, nor yet assign dark motives to his work. When with silent tread you view some somber fold, for lo, within each darker thread there twines a thread of gold. We need to remember this today. God is doing the work, even in the darkness, even in the obscurity of not knowing and not seeing and not knowing what we're doing even. But it's just our job to obey and go forward and persevere no matter what. He is with us. He's going to bring goodness and beauty out of, out of it. Hallelujah. So today I want you to be encouraged and know God is sovereign. He's got it all under control. He has placed in authority all over this world his chosen people. And his work is going to be done. And his word is going to be fulfilled. And it is not going to return void. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name.